Good day students. Welcome to a new class of skilled education and we are doing ICT skills and here today we are going to learn with a new chapter called as introduction to internet and email. So what is internet? Internet is a worldwide network of computers and these computers or millions of computers all around the world are connected to each other. So it is a network where computers all across different locations in the world can communicate with each other and it is a very popular because it's flexible to use and it has got high speed. So basically internet is nothing but a network of networks. So where millions and millions of computers all around the world are communicate are connected with each other and they can communicate with each other very easily and with using very high speed. So now what is internet? Internet as a network is used in organizations for private networks or it is used in for linking offices and their employees together. It is used for transferring official data across and it is used for conducting meetings and conferences. So basically these are where network where internet is used as a network. Now let us understand what is the World Wide Web. World Wide Web refers to a collection of information which is accessible over the internet. So there is a difference between internet and the World Wide Web. So the World Wide Web is also referred to as the web. Now it consists of millions and millions of pages of text, pictures, sounds, animations on all the various topics which are there. So basically the World Wide Web is the web of information. These uh, all this information is in the form of web pages and there is, they are stored on different computers all around the world and as internet connects all these different computers you get all this information. So all the information which is available over the internet uh, in the form of text, pictures, sound, mu music, uh, uh, animations, graphics etc. All this together forms the world wide web. Now the World Wide Web, the web pages which contain certain words and pictures when you click on it, it takes you to another web page. This is called as a hyperlink. So whenever you visit a website, you will realize that when you there are certain words which are highlighted and uh, when you move around that those particular words, uh, a, hand, a symbol of a hand type of thing comes and when you click on that, it will take you to another page on the on another web page. So this is called as a hyperlink. Now a collection of web pages together forms a website. So many multiple web pages together forms a website. So together if, if I have a website of a school I may have multiple pages of information, multiple pages of pictures, images etc. And all these together forms a website. So a website can be accessed by means of a unique name which is given to it. So every website has got a unique name with the help of which you can access that website. And you need a good web browser to access a website. Now a website is a collection of web pages which are grouped together usually in various ways that is using the hyperlink and it is, all, uh, it is uh, commonly called as a website or a site. So you have got Instagram web page or uh, Facebook or you have got many different different websites of different companies, different organizations. Uh, so all this is a web site. Now what is a web server? A computer that hosts this particular website is called on the internet is called as a web server. So every website is hosted on a particular computer on the internet which is called as the web server. So you have got a web server with the help of a browser you will access the internet and the web server and from there you go and access the actual web, uh, web server on which this particular site is hosted. Now a web page. Any individual page of a website is called as a web page. It is written in a special computer language which is called as HTML. So every website is or a web page is created using the language of HTML and that is hypertext markup language. Now the first page of a website is called as the home page. Now there are two types of web pages. One is a static web page and one is a dynamic web page. So what is the difference between the two? So you know that a collection of web pages is called as a website and the first page of a website is called as the home page. And there are two different types of web pages. That is the static web page and the dynamic web page. So what are they? Let us see.
Now, static web page is a web page in which all the information is presented by the user exactly as it is stored. So, for example, any tutorial website in that particular site, whatever is there, it is exactly stored in that way. Whereas in a dynamic web page, which is usually controlled by the application, so the users have restricted access uh, access levels, including full access to the web page, or depending upon the pre-accessed uh, rights. So, uh, dynamic web pages show different time. At different times, they show different types of data. For example, a shopping website. A shopping website can show different different data at different different times. So it is dynamic. It keeps on changing one after the other, and the user has got limited rights to access certain parts of the uh, website, where web page. Whereas in a in a static web page, whatever is there in that, it remains the same. Uh, any number of times that you open that web page, it will be the same stored data which the user can access. So this is the difference between the uh, static web page and a dynamic web page. One changes, one does not change. So this is uh, the they, these are the two different types of web pages in a website. Now, what is the meaning of a search engine? A website which helps you to go into these web pages is called as a search engine. That means you can search for the different websites using a search engine. For example, Google, Bing, Yahoo. These are all examples of search engines with the help of which you can search for websites and web pages. Now, what is the meaning of a URL? That is a uniform resource locator or Every web page has got a unique address which helps to identify that particular web page on the net. Now, this unique address is called as a URL or the uniform resource locator. Now, this URL is basically divided into two parts. The protocol identifier which identifies the protocol which has been used and then the resource name which specifies the complete address of that particular website or, or on the internet. So, these are the two ways in which a URL is uh, divided. So the first thing, for example, HTTP and www.mywebsite.com. Now this is a particular full address of a website. In this, HTTP is the protocol that is hypertext uh, transfer protocol. That is the protocol which is used, and www.mysite.com is the resource name. So basically, every website address is divided into two parts. That is the protocol and the uh, resource name. So, as I already mentioned, every web every website has got a unique address referred to as the URL, and every URL specifies the exact location of the web page on the internet. Now, certain conventions need to be followed when you name a web page. So, every web page you must realize that the name of the website can be anything of your choice, but the extension which follows it has got a particular convention which needs to be followed. So let us look at the details of that. So an overview of the web addresses. So whenever there is a web address or a website which is called .com, it indicates that the website is for a commercial organization. .edu indicates that the website is for educational institutions such as schools, colleges and universities. .net indicates that the website is for network oriented organizations or uh, for an ISP that is the internet service provider. .org indicates that the website is for a non profit organization dot info indicates that the website is for informative in nature dot museum indicates that the website is for a museum or an individual museum profession now note that country wise also there will be a difference in the domain for example a domain of ke is for kenya in is for india jp is for japan like this so if i have got a particular address that uh, smgi.edu.in suppose i've got a website called shrima.com SM that is Srima group of institutions dot SMGI dot edu dot in edu dot in means it's an educational institution and it is in India. So this way you can identify the name of a website by the these particular indicators that whether it is a commercial website is an educational one or it is an informative one and into which country it belongs to that also it is indicated by dot in dot jp dot ke like this so this is the way a website or a, is named and that is the url of a website is named now what are the applications of internet now we know what is what what is internet what are what is the difference between internet and website web uh, www and how a web page is divided website is divided into different web pages and what is the information that we get on a website now what are the applications of internet so we can say that the different applications of internet are 
first is searching for information whatever information you are searching for you can get it through any search engines chatting over the internet video conferencing social networking like twitter facebook all this type of social networking sites are there e learning e shopping e reservations of hotels uh, Uh, say uh, this uh, tickets flight tickets hotel reservations etc email sending of email and receiving of emails and e banking so these are some of the internet applications let us go into detail each of this first of all email email stands for electronic mail it is the message that you send and receive from one computer to the other so messages can be sent via email from one computer to the other what is chatting chatting as you know is uh, textual communication or real time texting between two people and the generally these messages are very short next is video conferencing video conferencing uses the internet as a visual communication between two people who are present at different locations so using video conferencing a person sitting in america can easily uh, conference one on one with the with people sitting in india or any other countries like this so at different locations people can communicate with each other what is social networking i need not tell you social networking is the use of internet based media sites for getting stay connected with your family friends uh, relatives or your official groups you can have direct communication using the social networking sites next is e learning as the name mentions it refers to learning system that is done on the electronic device using internet connection so whatever you are doing right now that is called as a part of e learning that is you are using internet and your electronic devices to learn using the internet connection next is e shopping as you know very well buying and selling of goods on the internet is called as e shopping the customers can buy it uh, any goods on the internet at the comfort of their home 24 hour transactions are there and you can give payment also you can do using the uh, credit card debit card net payment etc and last one is e reservation e reservation means booking online tickets train tickets movie tickets or hotel bookings tour packages everything can be done all reservations can be done using the internet websites for these particular e from these particular e reservation sites so basically these are the uses or applications where internet is used let us go on to the next very important part of internet which is called as the email what is email and let us go on to the different aspects of an email so what is the advantages of email first is that it is very fast and easy it is the fastest means of communication to reach any part of the world in seconds you can send text messages and along with that you can also attach your attachments of the mail can have picture sound messages anywhere across the globe and the messages can consist of a few lines or more so basically these are the advantages of email so email means sending and receiving messages across the one computer to the other across any part of the world then you don't have to pay anything extra for sending or receiving an email it is automatically gets included in the internet connection so there is no special charges for sending or receiving emails you don't Uh, you uh, you need not be on your computer online all the time to receive the mail the mail already automatically comes into your inbox and whenever you have time you can uh, see the mails and reply to them then it is an eco friendly way because there is no use of paper in sending an email and also you can send bulk messages to a large number of people at the same time so basically there are a lot of advantages of using emails and a few of them which i already discussed below about uh, before this these are the advantages of using an email now to use an email the first important thing is that you should have an email account so you need to open an email account and have an email address so an email address is divided into two parts the user name and the host and these two parts are separated with an at the rate so you know very well that if you have an email id it will be my email at the net gmail.com which means that your uh, uh, my uh, mail is the name of your uh, email address and dot g uh, dot com uh, that is gmail.com is your host name on which email host server you are hosting your email id so this is the email address everybody i know by should my now everybody must be having their own email account and you know what an uh, onto it may be on readifmail.com it can be a siffy it can be on gmail whichever is the host name you have to it is attached separated with an at the rate sign 
The next is an email program or an application. So an email program enables you to send and receive messages and most popular ones are gmail.com, yahoo.com, readifmail.com. So these are the basic email programs or applications on which you can use to send and receive mails. Now sending and receiving mail. When you, once you use your email ID and log in to your, with the password, you have to set your password, you have to create your own email ac account. Using that you get, you are getting, you get an email uh, uh, address and you have to also set a password using which events. Once you enter into your email uh, account, you will get to see a list of the mails which you have got. Uh, on your uh, email uh, this thing and on the side you have got inbox compose and lot of options from which you can start messages and uh, different types of spams all this you can see on the left hand side and on the right hand side you get to see the details of the messages that you have received now when you click on compose you get to see a new mailbox uh, 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 a dialog box in which you can on the to address you will click and write down the address of the person whom you want to send the mail to and then below that you have got a subject line onto which you can write down the subjects that you are that is the email id so that it easily identifies what mail is it is about and below that in the white area you can type the actual uh, subject matter of your email now along with that there are some for formatting uh, tools also available to you and below that you also have got certain tools with the help of which you can attach files or you can send files to the drive etc all that can be done using the bar below you can attach uh, audio files video files pictures everything can be attached to your email id and when you click on the send button then the address which uh, the two address you it the email gets delivered within seconds so this is the way an email is sent. Now, some of the options when you are composing email is the two option. The two option is where you actually write down the email address of the person whom you are sending the message to. Now, along with that, there is also option called as a CC option. It stands for carbon copy. So this option allows you to send messages to several people at the same time and every recipient will know whom the other person is, who is uh, the other person who is receiving the mail. So CC means carbon copy. So the carbon copy is for people, uh, multiple people you can send it and each other the recipients will know who else has got the uh, a copy of the same mail. Now each email ID is separated with a semicolon. In the CC when you put many multiple addresses you have to separate it with a semicolon. Now the next one is BCC that is in blind carbon copy. In this option you are allowed to send the same message to several people. Only thing is that the recipient will not know whom the other email is, uh, who is the other recipient of the email message. So if I send it to one person, the other person will not, I can send it to multiple people, but each other they will not know who else has received the same email. So that is called as the blind carbon copy or BCC. The next one is the subject option in which you have to write down a few words about the content of the message. Now what happens is when you write a subject line, when it comes to the other person's inbox, automatically the person will be able to view the subject and, and then decide whether he wants to open it immediately or whether he can postpone it or open it at a later time. All this depends upon the subject. So it is always best to give a subject of the email in the subject line. The next one is attachment. So in attachments icon helps you to attach files like documents, presentations, images, videos, etc. onto your e along with your email message. Uh, but uh, the only thing is there are slight restrictions on the um, size of the files which can be sent using attachments. If the size of the file is too huge then you can attach it in a drive. You can send it in a Google Drive. You, a drive is a place where large files can be uh, uploaded and the link of that particular uh, drive file can be sent via email to the people. So this is called as an attachment. Uh, so with this we come to the end of this chapter on internet and email. I hope you have exactly understood and uh, I'm, I know I'm sure that you are very familiar using the internet and you know the concepts of web pages, websites and how to send and receive emails and what are the different applications for which internet is used. So this uh, is the gist of whatever we have learned today in, in today's class. Thank you.